Um, I don't, I don't plan on boxing him. I plan on going at him. I plan on going at him the way he comes at people. Um, you know, they always say a guy who always wins by knockout ends up losing by knockout. So he's going to come at me, I'm going to come at him. You, um, you've been pretty vocal about Canelo's uh, slips. I mean, you deal with Victor Conti all the time, so like you, you have like I'm sure you get some extra knowledge about what's going on. What is most troubling to you about everything that went down with Canelo? I mean, as a fighter, fighters, as we know, I mean, we know, you know, I mean, if you ask any fighter, we know what's going on, and we know that you know fighters doing something or not doing nothing. I mean. We grew up in gym wars, you know, we fight, we, we fight our ways throughout anything. There's been days where I had, I looked horrible in sparring, days that I looked good with the same guy, you know, but the thing about boxing is so beautiful is you, you, if you, if you get your ass kicked one day, you can go home and work on mistakes. Just a little bit of step back can change the whole fight game. You know what I mean? The next day you can go in there and if you take a step back, you're actually landing on the guy. So boxing is like a chess match and people don't know that it's not about doing something to be strong to kill somebody to hurt somebody it's actually a chess match and that's what i love about boxing is that you can correct your mistakes but correct it the right way don't try to get advantage by doing something else being with victor conti you know he opened my eyes to a lot of things before i got to him he made me do a blood test he did a blood test he goes before you before i even talk to you i need to know yeah. what you're about so he did a blood test on me and he, he said that i'm a clean fighter and i have been throughout my whole life and that's what I'm all about. My dad he doesn't even believe in taking vitamins and stuff like that. He's like, e eat some fruit, eat some vegetables. You know what I mean? So this whole Canelo thing, man, I, I'm really disappointed that, you know, that he's not being punished the way he should be. And is that, do you feel like this, this evening, like a lot of people are saying, like, why even have the fight on Cinco de Mayo? You know, it's, it's, the, big, the big fight has gone away. Is this an opportunity for you guys to sort of restore some faith in boxing? I mean, when he fought Canelo the first fight, the fight was intense because the people were trying to see what Canelo has. But Canelo really came in there and he worked on his defense really good in the fight. And that's what he was doing. He didn't come to fight. He didn't come to... He came to box. And it was the first time people saw Canelo actually trying to box and he was just scared to get hit. Um, people people want to see fight. When, when, the, when the Canelo and the Golovkin fight got made, people thought they are going to see a war and someone was going to get knocked out. But they, I felt like they were playing it safe in that fight. But with me, I got nothing to lose, but I got the whole world to gain. So I'm going to hit him with the world and see what's up. And Cinco de Mayo in LA. Skeptics that say this is not going to be something Mike. exciting. I know a couple of people that are willing to put their house up for you. What do you have to say? I think it's amazing because people that know boxing, like I said, styles make fights and people don't know that styles. I mean, if you watch Chavez Jr., I, I spar with Chavez Jr. in the gym and the style, you know, you could see the style. It's just, I've always loved to go forward. And the people that know boxing, that, that they know that the guy hasn't fought somebody that has technique and is going to be in front of him. Because you can have defense and move around, but... You could also have defense and be in front of the guy and hit the guy also. You don't got to run. I mean, what I saw in boxing that I've learned in my, my whole life is that fear. You know what I mean? People fear him. I don't fear him. So if you got no fear, you go into the fight and you show that to the other guy, you break him down just by looking at him in the eyes to tell him that I'm here to fight. I'm not scared of you, man. I know you're, you're human. You're not a robot. You're not a machine. Everybody is beatable. On any given night, like I said, I've sparred with really crazy killers in the gym that I've done good with. And there are people that said, oh, my God, don't go in there with them. And I got in there and I did really good. You so, have been busy enough in the last two to three months. There's no rust issue. No, because yeah. we've had like four or five guys pull out. Yeah. The guy that Danny Jacobs is fighting right. this Saturday is the guy that I was supposed to fight on March 17th. Okay. And he pulled out to fight Danny Jacobs. So... It's not that I've been out of the ring because of anything else. It's because my promoter has been working on fights. The guys have been pulling out. Ishe Smith pulled out, right. and the Salaki guy pulled out. And, you know, now I got Golovkin. I don't pull out, man. We, we stay in. <laughs> we finish, bro. He's had a high knockout percentage, and in his last two fights, he's gone the distance. What, what will you see in those styles? What have you seen in those fights? Um, exactly what I was telling you guys. He has a lot of knockouts, but he went the decision the last couple of fights. Why? If he's so great, why not end everything in a knockout? That says something that 
people do go rounds with him. People do hit him. And people did show. One of those fights with Danny Jacobs, some people actually thought he, you know, he lost that fight because of the way Danny fought. So people have been showing that, you know, the guy is beatable and the guy is hittable. Um, the guy does have my respect and he, he's a monster. I'm going to bug as a giant and I know that. But he doesn't know what I have and what I feel in my heart. No, how, did you find out about, how did you find out about Golovkin being an option for you? Who told you? When Don you King. Okay. And what Don was King. your reaction when you when at all that? Yes. My reaction was yes. If you're serious, hell yes. Let's do it. Yes. And next thing I know, man, King actually had a guy, a middleweight, that he offered them and they turned him down. <laughs> so... He asked me, I said, yes, man, of course. He's like, man, you, you got a lot of balls, kid. I was like, of course I do. He goes, if you can talk, the, you can fight the way as well as you talk, man, I'm, I got your back. I'm like, believe in me, King, let's do this, you know, and we're going to do this. When you signed a, uh, about a year ago, when you signed with him, I think many of us here pretty much were, were clowning. What do you have to say now? I mean, what do you guys think about it? You know what I mean? You guys, you guys were clowning, but, you know. It's okay, you know what I mean? It's okay, I, I see that. You know, I see that people put Don King down, but, you know, no matter what, no matter how you put him down, you know, he's the godfather of, of, of boxing, and people know that going back to the days. People respect Don King, and, and, and honestly, he's been good to me and my family, so he's, he's, a, he's a good man, and people need to respect him instead of putting him down. You know, Conor, I know you're a guy that doesn't need any extra motivation, but obviously they're picking you to lose. They're picking you because they think you're going to lose, and they want to preserve the Canelo rematch in September. How how much far how far up does that get you? Um, when I fought Timothy Bradley and to make it to the Olympics, they picked me to lose. They picked me to get knocked out, and I dropped Timothy Bradley in the first round and, and had him out in the last round. I fought Berto. I fought Austin Trout. They picked me to lose all those fights, and I didn't. I came to fight. Same thing here. It's always good when they when they um. They pick you, it's like extra motivation, you know what I mean? What I do, no matter what he does, people are going to be, oh, we know he did that, we know he was going to do that, but whatever I do, like, oh, shit. You know, why didn't he, what, where's Vonless at? Well, this is not the same Vonless, you know what I mean? How gratifying would it be to not only beat Golovkin, but to just upset the, the, the rematch and everything and just upset all the plans of boxing? I know you that's, like that kind that's of That's what stuff. I'm about. It's a nightmare, right? I'm going to create a nightmare, baby. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> what, what, what takes over you? I mean, because obviously you've taken some losses along the way as a pro. But the, when you stand as an underdog, does something happen within, inside you to where you are able to rise to that level? It does. It does. It? It's, 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 it's motivation. It's fire. You know what I mean? People, people say mean things, and you see that, you know what I mean? You look your kids in the eyes, dude, every day, you know, like I'm about to shock the world, I can't wait, you know what I mean? That's all the motivation you need, you know? Just look my kid in the eye and say, I'm going to win for you, and that's what I'm going to do. What's a better weight class for you, 54 or 60? 160 now, you know what I mean? 160 <laughs> do you feel like, now. <laughs> do you feel like you have the proper time to be the, you know, the proper strength? I think so, yeah, I think so. You know, I'm working at Snack, so, you know, we're good. The fight that you were planning in March, like out. So was that 160 or was that 154? 154. That was a 154 tile eliminator for, for Jamal Charlo. Okay. Hmm. And uh, he pulled out to fight, uh, uh, he moved up, I guess, to fight uh, uh, Danny, and I moved up to fight. Are you finding it easier to, you're more confident, comfortable fighting at 160? I do. I think so. So um, throughout the years, whenever I fought heavier, I did good. What were you doing when Don King gave you the call? I was on my bed and my kids, my son Andrew and Ariana, they just jump on me every morning and you know, I take them to school. So I was in bed because, you know, Florida is three hours ahead. So I got the call about eight o'clock and he told me and I was like, baby, baby, triple G. And then, and then I looked at it because I was like, remember a couple weeks ago you said you said you like this for now I got to fight him. You know what I mean? So it was very good. It was happy. Um, I said I just said, yeah. And I called my trainer and I told him. And he was like, all right, you know, we went straight to the gym, man. We went back to the gym and we started working. You know, we were already in shape. We were getting ready for Salaki and, and we just continued our work. Linus, what do you expect that, uh, that night? Obviously, you're, you're the L.A. native, so, you know, he is the star. What, what do you expect that kind of fan, uh, fan kind of support to be like that night? Yeah, you guys are going to be, like, surprised. The homies that I got coming, man, the Latinos, the Mexicans, man, I love them, bro. They're, they're, they're good fans, you know what I mean? And, and my American people, everybody, man, my Armenians, you know what I mean? I just say one thing. I know that it's going to be intense. I got my people there. I just hope that people let me and Golovkin do the fighting in the ring and outside of the ring. They just enjoy the show. Just peace. Come enjoy the show. You know, drink a lot of tecate. Have a good time. But let us do the fighting in the ring. 
How gratifying right. is it to fight in Los Angeles? It's amazing. It's a dream come true. You know, when you lay in your bed, you know, it's funny. In going to the Olympics, I'd always lay in my bed. I didn't know I was going to go to Greece. But I was always listening to Greek music, and I was just picturing myself in the Olympics. And I made it to the Olympics, and the, the person that I was listening to in my headphones was performing in the opening ceremony, and I didn't even know. So it's just the same thing now. It's just laying in bed and just thinking about it, you know. Like, you just hear, like, down goes Golovkin, and I'm just <laughs> thinking, like, you know, thinking about stuff to do. I visualize it, and, and I, I seen the fight. I seen the victory. I see it every day, and, and, and that's why I'm so happy. I mean, you'll see, man. You know, you'll see, man. It's you'll see, knockout, bro. So. I, I, well, you know, when you visualize things, you see a lot of things. You know, I don't, I don't see this fight going. I'm not dancing around circles for him. You know, I don't got time for that. We're not, I'm not getting overtime pay. You know what I mean? So we're just going to go there. And uh, I think what I got to do, what I have to do, and what I've seen in my, my vision, it's going to work. Hey, right. what's up, Rhonda? <laughs> How you doing, Rhonda? <laughs> That's right. That's Ronda right there. My Everybody sister. Ah. <laughs> Ronda Rousey. That's right. You talk to her a lot? She comes here, you know, she's like a sister to us. When, when Ronda was here, she had no fights yeah. when we were together. Um, she had like one fight, and I remember one fight, a pit bull bit her leg. Oh. We put 15 stitches on her leg, and the next day she fought, and she got the girl in the arm bar. Nobody knew about that. So she's a warrior, um, I think like second or third fight. And that's what we knew, like, oh, shoot, this chick is, good, like, amazing. You know, she can be do something. Because she, she wanted a fight. So she's always been supportive. She comes here time to time, and we see her. Right now, she's doing that wrestling thing. So she'll come to the uh, fight. How's she doing? She's doing good. She was here actually two days ago, man. Three days ago, she saw me before she left. Is the rest of the training camp going to be finished up up north, or are you going to come down here? Um, well, we plan on going back and forth. We were there for a couple of weeks. Um, we're going to be here. I think we're going to finish here because we got a lot of killers in L.A., you know, they're going to come and spar with us. Over there, I was sparring a um, super middleweight guy, uh, Evgeny Chinchenko, I think his name was. He's, uh, he's undefeated uh, super middleweight right now. That's who we were sparring, and uh, the boy was tough, man. He just kept coming. I got the best from second day, though. I did good the second day. <laughs> so much as it made up his power, do you, I mean, do you even think about it at all? I know you're going in there to fight, but is that even in the back of your mind that you might run into something if, if you're a little careless? I mean, of course, it's a fight, you know. I've, I've ran into shots. I've run into shots all the time, you know what I mean? Um, what, has he? We'll see how he does. You think, you think he's been tested, his chin's been tested at all uh, from what you've seen? I, I don't think he's, it's been tested the way, you know, that I would want to test it. <laughs> you know, the only three losses came against you know, elite fighters. How much confidence does that give you? I mean, those losses came to guys that ran. If you watch those fights, I'm chasing the guys, I'm chasing the guys, I'm getting frustrated. The Lara, I was sprinting yeah, after Lara, right. you know what I mean? So those fights, I have to chase the guys. I don't have to chase Golovkin. And if you watch those fights, in the, just watch the first round. As soon as I hit Lara with a right hand, he goes, oh, shit, nope. And he starts going back away. Andrade, too. As soon as I dropped him, he got up and just started to dance circles around me. And that's, that, that's, that's the thing. With, with Golovkin, I know that if I hit him, he has the ego that he's going to be like, shit. You know what I mean? People see him as a macho man, a big guy. He's going to come and try to, you know, we'll see. I'm going to test him for sure. Did it surprise you that he engaged against her and he didn't run as much as he did with you? And I what think, did you make a first uh, victory performance over Lara? I think uh, he fought, you know, just like he said, Angulo times 10. That's what he did. He put the Angulo pressure on him. And, you know, Lara's legs are not the same. And it's, he, Lara was not the same after I fought him. <laughs> he wasn't the same after that. Do you plan on staying at 160 after this fight or do you want to stay at 54? Uh, well, I got to defend my titles, man. I got to defend my titles at 60, so 160. So that, that would be the plan then? Probably, yeah, that's yeah. the plan. You know what I mean? Do you take anything, obviously, Triple G's gone the distance his last two fights, Jacobs and Canelo. Do you take anything from those fights and, and that maybe you see you could Im implement in? Of course. He, got, he went to decision. You know what I mean? He went to decision, and he got hit. And he got hit. I mean, it's, I think it all started with Kell Brook when Kell Brook took the fight um, with him, and he started landing some punches. Everybody was scared of the guy, but after that Kell Brook fight, people were like, let me, let me get in there. And then Danny got in there, you know what I mean? And then, then finally, after all the years, Canelo's like, let me go in there now. And then he got in there, you know what I mean? And so I think that, you know, everybody is beatable on any given night. It just, you just got to, the best man shows up and then takes it. That's the beauty about boxing, you know, the underdog. How many people have counted the underdog out and they just come and perform and, and, and they just shine, you know what I mean? And it's going to be a great night. Can we How, I know it's kind of a silly question, but um, a lot of the fans kind of felt that Gennady might have 
ruined the fight with Canelo. Aside from the positive doping test, and Canelo felt that that everything that Gennady was saying kind of put pressured Ansac to take the fight where it was and kind of it ruined the whole fight. How do you feel about that? Do you think Gennady really wanted the Canelo fight or you kind of looked the way out of it? Um, I see it like this. Does Canelo really want the fight? You know what I mean? If he did, I mean, the, the I just heard like he took himself out of a lot of testing. You know, if he just got caught, I mean, if God forbid, if I ever get caught eating some kind of meat, supposedly, you know, something like that, I will test myself every single day to the media at least once a week to show people that I'm not you know what I mean? I, this is who I am. But he's not doing any of that. He's actually trying to dodge away from that. And the thing about this guy that I'm fighting, Golovkin, is a, you know, 100% pure athlete, clean athlete, 100%. I'm clean athlete, man. I never, I never failed any of those tests, you know what I mean? And we're ready to fight. I mean, the thing with Canelo, man, I, I used to like the kid, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm okay with, you know, Golden Boys and, and, and Robert Diaz and stuff. They're, they're good people. I know him. We know him. Uh, no, nah, Canelo doesn't want to spar with me. I mean, I was number one for WBC for a long time when I was with Top Rank. Um, when I first saw Roman, they promised me you get Canelo next, and then they gave me Lara. And then after Lara, they're like, oh, it's a rematch. It was a draw. You know what I mean? So I, did, I, I stopped going that way. That's why we fought Andrade, because it was like we're just going to chase him over and over again. And now, for all these years, for him to run away from Golovkin and to fight him, and then the second fight to do something like this... It just shows that, you know, he lost. I feel like he lost the rematch. How would have Andrade fared against um, Gennady having been in there with him? How would he have fared against Gennady? I know, I know well, you're in there now. It's, it's, your, it's your time, your moment. But Well, Andrade and, uh, you know, excuse my language, you know, when, when there's fights and the fight's not going good, all, the, all you hear is like, cool, cool. That's all you're going to hear when, when, when uh, uh, if, if the fight happened with Andrade, that's all you're going to hear. Mexican fans were just going to come there. You'll probably see bigger fans, bigger fights in the stands than you would see in the fight because he's just going to run all night trying to outbox him and, and, and at the end say, oh, I beat him, I beat him on points. That's just the way Andrade fights. He doesn't come to fight. He comes to box you and, and to beat you. But I do respect Andrade, his skills. Um, if you want Mexican style fighting, it's right here. You know what I mean? You go to any gym over here in California and they know that once you put me in the ring, I'm ready to go. I don't care who it is. I spar with heavyweights. I spar with super middleweights. I spar with Latif Coyote too, you know, so I spar with all those guys. I don't care. And Freddie Roach knew that, you know, everybody knows that. Ivanis, uh, how is this situation different than the Brook situation that he found himself in with Gennady Golovkin? Because I know people are going to bring parallels between uh, that fight and this fight. Uh, Groove, uh, Brook fought scared, I feel like. Brook, Brook just went in there um, to, to see who this guy is. And he said, as soon as he touches me, I, I, I feel like, my opinion, I feel like he told his coach, listen, as soon as I get my ass kicked, it's pull it. You know what I mean? We're done. <laughs> and uh, watching the Brook fight, um, he, I don't even know why he stopped at the fifth round because he was actually doing good in round number four. And I think in round number five, he just sat down and he just basically quit. You know what I mean? Uh, the Brook fight, I think he fought scared. I mean, uh, in the if you watch round number one, Brook is about to go down. And then Brook hits him with an uppercut. And all of a sudden, you see Triple G going back. And, and, and that's what people started to think, like, oh, shit. Like, like, dude, the guy, you know what I mean? Like, we saw something. We saw something. You know what I mean? That's where I think that's where it all started. How does it feel like mentally you kind of have the advantage going into this fight just because... You weren't dealing with, is my opponent going to be there? Am I going to fight? He said, you know what I mean? All that, you were just training, doing what you're doing. Next thing you get the call, hey, I'm, I'm getting the fight. Let's do it. I was thinking about it in my head, you know, like, oh, I wish, you know, they, they did something like that. If I can step in or something like that. And, and, and I didn't even know, man. I just got the call. I got the call. What's funny is that day I was running earlier in the morning, 6 a.m. I go running with my dad. Then I came home. I was in the bed with kids jumping all over me. And I got the call. It was so amazing, man.